First of all, how many of you were inspired by the stories you heard today? And how many of you were even more pissed off by the stories you heard today? My name is Paul Song. I come before you as the son of immigrants, first and foremost. I come before you as an oncologist who has seen far too many of my own patients go bankrupt strictly because they came down with cancer. I come before you as someone who has seen far too many of my patients who are undocumented or from communities of color present with late stage cancer because they could not get access to preventative screening or early care. Let's make no mistake about it. While the ACA did a tremendous amount of good, we still have a grossly immoral and unjust health care system. Even without a Republican repeal, 29 million people will remain uninsured in the United States. Three million people will remain uninsured in California, of which 350,000 of these are children. And because the Affordable Care Act was largely written by the private insurance industry and pharmaceutical industry, there is still no insurance rate regulation or provisions to stop outrageous drug prices. And as a result, one out of three people who actually got coverage as, uh, due to the Affordable Care Act delay seeking care because they can't afford the co-pays and deductibles. And one in 10 seniors still cannot afford to buy the medications they need to take. And sadly, the only thing that Republicans and Democrats could agree upon with regard to the Affordable Care Act was to exclude our undocumented brothers and sisters. Now, while a repeal would be disastrous, and it would take away coverage from roughly 20 million people that got coverage under the ACA, fighting simply to protect the ACA status quo is not enough. We must demand a fight and fight for single-payer Medicare for all. We must fight for a system that covers everyone, including our undocumented brothers and sisters provides everyone with the same high quality of care with no co-pays or deductibles. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're gonna hear a lot of lies that a single payer Medicare for all system is too expensive and we simply cannot afford it. But the truth is we can afford not to do it. And several other industrialized nations have shown a single payer healthcare system can deliver care for everyone much more cheaply. But here's the fact, in the state of California, I don't know many of you realize this, out of every health care dollar that is spent in the state of California, 70 cents comes from taxpayers. You take that with the fact that health insurers are taking 25 cents of every health care dollar away from actual health care, basically to hire administrators to deny care, to pay exorbitant salaries, and to use it for marketing and lobbying. So essentially, we are paying for universal health care. We're just not getting it. Now, Congressman John Conyers recently reintroduced his Medicare for All bill, H.R. 676, into Congress. Yeah. And sadly, of our 39 Democratic congressmen in the U.S. Congress, only 10 have signed on to that. And soon we will be working with our state legislature in Sacramento to advance a single-payer bill here in the state of California. But already a few Democratic assemblymen have vowed to block it from getting out of committee. And it's clear that Governor Brown has no intention to sign it if it ever gets on his desk. I hope you will start to build the same outrage to our members in Congress who continue to do the bidding of the private insurance industry and pharmaceutical industry instead of looking out for their own constituents. So in order to have a real health care system for the people, it must be done by the people. But this only happens if we come together and say enough is enough and we demand more. This only happens when we hold our elected officials who continue to put the will of the private ins insurance industry before us, we hold them accountable. And as we start to advance this bill in Sacramento, this is where we need to rise up 
and we need to go to all the districts of those people who claim to be on our side and but privately will continue to block this. We need to make their lives hell. Finally, as I mentioned, I'm the son of immigrants. My mom came as a refugee during the Korean War. She ended up graduating from Columbia Teachers College and her first job, uh, her boss was Shirley Chisholm. And Shirley Chisholm, for many of you who don't know, is the first African-American woman elected to Congress. I'm wearing a t-shirt from her president. She's the first woman to run for president. Her motto is she was unbought and unbossed. And I just want to conclude with words from Ms. Chisholm. We have never seen health as a right. It has been conceived as a privilege, available only to those who can afford it. This is the real reason the American health care system is in such a scandalous state. She said this back in 1970, and things have not changed. Well, it's time to change. It's time to take back this state. It's time to take back our legislature and get the health care system we deserve in this state. Once we do it in the state of California, the federal government will have no choice but to follow the sixth largest economy in the world. Thank you very much. I'm Dr. Paul Song. I'm co-chair of Campaign for Healthy California. Uh, and we're here to really demand, not only do we uh, re keep the ACA, but we replace it with the Medicare for All. So what's going on here today? It's really designed to bring people together to organize because we know that unless we as a community come together and demand more from our elected officials, that we won't get what we really deserve. So this is really designed to people, for people to say that we're in this and, we're, and the fight's just beginning. And could you explain what Healthy California is all about? So Campaign for Healthy California is an organization, with, a coalition with multiple labor unions, uh, healthcare activists that really have come together to say that the Affordable Care Act, while it did a lot of good, it's not enough, that we really need a single payer Medicare for all system. And why a single payer? Well, we, we know from the data that every other industrialized nation that has single payer has been able to deliver health care for every single person for much cheaper and better outcomes. And that's what we deserve. We're already spending way too much per person in the United States for health care, but yet we have 29 million people that remain uninsured. So how do you implement single payer health care for a nation? Well, nation, nationally, with our uh, the way the with the president and legislature, that's not going to happen. It's going to have to happen state by state, very much like the way gay marriage started, right? It went state by state, and eventually it got adopted federally. So first thing is we start here in California. We we have uh, the sixth largest economy, so it's possible to do it in an economy of this size. Once we show we can do it in California, and it saves money, it insures everyone, including our undocumented brothers and sisters. Then we can really show the rest of the nation what really works. Okay, and what's the last words? What's the message? to the citizens of uh, California. Demand more, organize, and hold your elected officials accountable from both parties. Remember, we had a Democratic majority in the House and Senate with a Democratic president, and single payer was never even an option in the run-up to the Affordable Care Act. Thank you, Dr. Paul. You're welcome. Thank you. It's time to fight for health care as a right. It's time to fight for health care as a right. It's time to fight for health care as a right. It's time to fight for health care as a right. It's time to fight for health care as a right. It's time to fight for health care as a right. Unfortunately, what do we